All right, this is artificial selection AP Bio Lab 1 um, data analysis for the parental generation. So I've had my uh, four classes input their trichome densities on this Excel, sorry, Google spreadsheet. And then I, ha I created a separate column J right here, um, ordering all the data points. Um, and I had the spreadsheet organize it from lowest to highest. So we have about 80 inputs. And I have my students copy this spreadsheet and um, derive the average standard deviation and standard error for this data. I provide them with the equations for the average standard deviation and standard error. Students should be able to interpret what each of these mean. Um, so we go over that in class. Um, the easiest thing to do is to probably just copy the cell. So in this case, M3, control C, I'll copy the equation. And then I go to the bottom of J and then I control V, paste that equation. Now remember, you always need an equal sign to make this into an actual function. So I'm going to place an equal sign right there, hit enter, and that'll calculate your average for those values in column J. So 15.56 is our average. Now you can probably predict the relative standard deviation just based on the different numbers that we see. We have a whole range of trichome densities for each plant going from zero all the way to 64. So remember standard deviation shows you um, how much variation around a mean is, uh, exists in the, in the sample population. So let's go ahead and calculate that using this equation right here. I'm going to control C, cell M4, and go down here, and control V, paste it into the next cell. And remember to always include an equal sign in the front. Equals, enter. And here is our very large standard deviation, 13.73. Okay, so that's pretty big. Um, all right, next we're going to calculate standard error. Uh, standard error is a measure of the standard deviation of your sample size divided by the square root of the sample size. So the bigger your sample size, the smaller your standard error, which is a good thing because it better represents your actual population. So I'm going to go ahead and copy M, cell M5, control C. That's the equation. And I'm going to control V, paste that, and include an equal sign. OK, and we have a small, relatively small standard error, 1.53 which is probably due to a very large sample size of about 80 plants. Okay, now we're ready to graph this. And I always ask my students to pick the best way to graph this, and hopefully they'll come up with the best answer, which is to graph this data as a histogram. So um, I actually walk them through this the first time around. Um, for the second generation, I have them do the entire data analysis on their own. So let's um, just pick a cell that's empty and um, write out our x-axis title, which is the number of trichomes per plant. And I'm going to start at zero because I think it's interesting to see how many plants had no trichomes. And then 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40. 41 to 50, 51 to 60, 61 to 70, and I think that'll give us our maximum number. Now, the reason I don't use a dash for 1 to 10 is because I tried that, and Google Spreadsheet then converts it into January 10th for me, which I don't like. So I like um, this way better. Saves me trouble later. Our y-axis, the dependent variable, is going to be the number of plants that have that density of trichomes. 
And I'm going to extend this a little bit so we can see the title. Okay, so when you add up all the numbers, so basically I have the students count how many plants have zero trichomes. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. All right, so when you count up all the other plants, it looks like there's 28 here, um, 21, 15, 6, 0, 1, and 2. All right, so now we have our x and our y axis. Let's make a graph. So I'm gonna select these two columns. I'm gonna press down shift and select the bottom corner. And now I have both columns highlighted. Then I go to the insert tab up here and select chart. Okay, now Google selects a bar graph for me. I want a histogram, but I've learned that if I select histogram, and you can actually do that, if you go to chart type, there's a, an option for histogram down here. Um, but I don't like this option because it does not allow me to add sources of error onto the graph. So I'm gonna stick with the bar graph and I explained to my kids that this is not your ideal histogram. Um, a histogram, you would have the bars um, actually touch, uh, but Google Spreadsheet hasn't figured out a way to, to accomplish that. So that's something that um, the engineers have to work on, I hope. All right, so we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna use this graph right here and customize it because I don't like um, the title and um, how we don't see the errors. Um, I don't need this legend because we have number of trichomes per plant on the X label and number of plants on the Y label. So let's go to the legend bar right here and under position, go ahead and put none and that eliminates the legend. We don't need it. Next, um, let's add the standard error bars. So under series, you can select this box right here for error bars. And this actually shows me the type as a percent and gives you the value of 10%. I don't want that. So I'm gonna change that to constant. And instead of 10, we already calculated our standard error to be 1.53. So I'm gonna add that value. So now I have standard error bars for each of my uh, bars, which is nice. All right, that looks good. And then the last thing would just be to change the title. I never like titles that just restate the X and the Y labels. So let's go to chart title and change that. Um, how about distribution of trichome densities for parental generation of Wisconsin fast plants? Okay, it's a long title, but it kind of gets the gist of what we were doing in the class. Um, so I like that title. I'm going to keep it. And um, I think that looks good. Uh, we have our labels. We have our title. We have our standard error bars. Um, so what I tell my students is when you, once you have the graphs, go ahead and print it and include this into your lab notebook. And we'll wait for the second generation. We'll collect data for those plants and see how this distribution shifts um, through artificial selection. If anybody wants a copy of the Google spreadsheet that we used for my classes, I have the link provided um, as a source so you can access and view uh, the equations and um, how I set up the data. Good luck.